Thanks, Michael. What a pleasure this is. It's a meeting of cultures. It's a... a... Now, let's go over to John, our tournament director, John Lehman, to get the session underway. Matchroom Pool welcomes you to the U.S. Open Championship. Players, it's time to break! <laughs> As I've said before, the cacophony of spheres, music to the ears. Although three tables you won't hear breaking off right now because they are still going on from the first session today. Three matches on the the one loss side haven't been completed yet, so that just goes to show how intense that first session was. And this match is bound to be intense as well, Nick. You have to make Jason Shaw, for me personally, I think he's an overwhelming favourite. Well, indeed, Phil. Uh, an absolute pleasure to be here. Good evening to those stateside and across the pond. Shaw's really in anybody's top five of rotation players in the world, both in terms of actual ability and just raw talent. And, of course, Trump, a virtuoso with a cue in his hands. And a nice start for him. I don't know if he left a sliver here for Shaw. But uh, just a terrific match here. Let's see what both men bring to the table tonight. Well, he's obviously left Trump a nice shot to get things going. The table is fairly open. To leave himself a nice angle on the two to navigate position on the three. He's done well with it. Just wants to avoid the nine ball here. And this is Trump's first real test, as they've said, he's had. You know, a fairly easy draw thus far, but everything we know about Trump, he seems like the kind of guy who would revel in a moment like this as opposed to whatever the opposite of that would be. I'm not sure if the four passes the seven. If it doesn't, this is a bit precarious. He's looking at it now. And he just bobbles in. He's gotten away with it, though. Yeah, I think the tactical side of Trump's game has been better than I thought it would be. His break-off shot certainly better than I think most anticipated. Surprisingly, he's missing more balls than we thought he would. He's getting an a round of applause to signify that he did in fact hook him behind the seven. Dynamite shot if he did. He may have left him just a little piece, perhaps enough to take it on cross side, although it's awfully thin. Comes with a safety of sorts, and that's a nice shot. Beautiful speed there, freezing him on the end rail. You're right, Phil. It, it, it's it's the pocketing of the balls that's eluded Trump at times, and it's just the spin and Extension English of pool is is vastly different than snooker. There is a, a debate, you know, would he have been better to play with these normal snooker cue? Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting question. For me, instinctually, the answer is yes. And look at this. A two-way shot of sorts for Shaw. He does apologize to Trump. Perhaps he wasn't playing it. Only he'll know. But what a start for Jason Shaw. 1-0. Yeah, the fortuitous 4-9 combination 
getting the nine in motion in this game is always a, a useful thing to do. You never know. And the nine there just about crept in. So Jason Shaw, very quick to apologise, but inside, delighted. Just missed the cue ball. The cue ball then just missed again. And the nine went in. By the way, Jason Shaw is here via a Hill Hill victory over Shea Chia Chen from Chinese Taipei. And would you believe over on table seven on the one last side of the draw, H.C. Chen is again Hill Hill, this time with Beda Alawadi. He likes his money's worth. Yes, he certainly does. I've seen Shaw win so many Hill Second Hill right. matches over the years. Jason he, uh, Shaw to break, leading one right to nil. He's just clutched this guy, he has it all. You know, skills and uh, a lot of heart, a lot of grit. Corner ball flies in, the one seems to be cooperating, although the three does not. Let's see if he elects to jump right off of the bat, roll out, perhaps even kick. Surveying it as we speak, looks like he is. Well, he's eyeing it. Awkward angle for a southpaw, two lefties tonight, Phil. I believe he is grabbing the jump cue, or perhaps not. Let's see. Over Judd Trump's shoulder there, you can see basically over the word Judd on the, the scoreboard. That's Jack Trump. Judd's brother and right-hand man. Since those two got together and Jack started travelling around with Judd everywhere, Trump's strike rate for winning tournaments has gone through the roof. There you go. You know, they obviously have a great rapport together, comfortable. Nice to roll around with your people. Push out here from, from Shaw, and he'll, he'll challenge Trump to accept and work a safety of some sort, which he's been masterful at thus far. Yeah, I think there have been two portions of his tactical play. One is that sometimes he doesn't see an obvious shot that someone more experienced would, but when he tries to play a shot, the execution is normally very tidy. Indeed, and nicely done here, although the one-two carom might be fairly makeable for a player like Shaw. I think he'll want to apply a lot of right-hand spin to this one. He's looking at it now. Try to come off of the left side of the one into the two. And he's done very nicely. Just nicks the seven, and I believe he's perfect. I don't think the purple four ball precludes his sight. One of the great strokes in the game, Jason Shaw, such a powerful player. Just filled with talent. Plays with an exceptionally long cue, as does Shane Van Boning and a few others. He, he has the extension basically permanently added to the back of the cue, 65 some odd inches. Nicely done here. Yeah, that cue is so lengthy, you could perhaps take a pole vaulting. <laughs> right. And a versatile uh, weapon of sorts. He might elect to zip it one, two across or just pinch it back slightly with the ladder. And there's nothing Shaw revels in more. He just relishes being centre stage, and this kind of challenge will suit him down to the ground. Jason Shaw wins the rack. As this nine ball goes in a little more conventionally than in the opening rack, 
but it's the same player who knocks it in. Jason Shaw leading 2-0. Now, this session is the best of the lot so far. Everywhere you look, there's world-class talent fighting, trying to go deeper into the tournament. The defending champion, Joshua Filler, is back in action this evening against Singapore's Aloysius Yap. Naoki Oi against Dennis Graber. That really is the Joker against the man who's so serious and intense. Two totally different characters, but one thing they've got in common, they're both great players. Max Lechner against Marco Chuta. Chang Junglin from Chinese Taipei. Great player up against Oliver Sholnoki, a coming force from Hungary. Ralph Suke, veteran now for one of the game's greats against Mark Beisterbosch, who has got an absolutely blistering break-off, let me tell you. Bosch's fellow countryman, Neil Spine, up against Fedor Gorscht. It really is right an evening to save it. To right. Leading two rocks to nil. Oh, a veritable who's who. I mean, things are really heating up down here. Which is to be expected at the US Open as things get thinned out. The room is just full of world-class talent from near and far. Corner ball flies in, one in the side. Two balls careening around, six in the side, eight hanging up. A nice look at the two, and Shaw's reminding Trump early how things go on on this side of, uh, of the pond. And let me just quickly remind you that table two action can be followed on the YouTube channel of Matru, live over there. And a really interesting contest going on. Earl Strickland, 60 years of age, on the one lost side of the door, taking on Moritz Neuhausen, a very young German player who's got his whole career in front of him. Strickland leads 1-0. Oh, always compelling to see Earl in action. Lovely speed from uh, Shaw on that opening two ball. Probably try to get fairly close to this eight ball to ease navigations to the nine, why not? Let's really see how long that cue is from this angle. As good a player as any when he's on, Phil. Yeah, some folks in the tool community think this is a sure thing for Jason. Maybe not, but right now he is off to the ideal start. He leads Judd Trump 3 zip.
Pool three, snooker, nil. That's the story so far here at the Harris Resort in Atlantic City. It is day three of the US Open. Judd Trump has won his first three matches in the tournament, but now the snooker man finds himself with his back against the wall. Mind you, the, the Jason Shaw break off in rack four has not worked out. Over on table two, which you can see on the Matchroom channel on YouTube. Oh, well, Strickland. Well, he's rolling back the years. I think he's 3 0 up on Moritz Neuhausen. Well, Strickland, a five time US Open champion. And talking of US Open champions, another one has joined us in the commentary box. The 2003 champion, Jeremy Jones. Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks, Phil. Hey, Nick. Looks like Shell's doing his thing. First dry break, I'm assuming. It's actually the second. And hello, sir. But uh, he is indeed doing his thing. He, uh, he looks good so far. And Trump, any errors? Small, but he, he's also looked good. He did bobble one in rack one, and, and Shaw's basically punished him. Lovely shot there. Yeah, Jeremy, what set the pattern really was the fact that Shaw won the opening rack with a fluked 4 9 combo. We'll talk about it with Jason all the time. Eagle Eye, of course, is his nickname because of that deadly ball pocketing. But this part of the game, I don't think he gets enough credit. Nifty little shot he made on the kick shot there on the one. Same here by Judd Trump. Great shot. Yeah, nicely done from Trump. And you're right, Jeremy. I, I suppose it's often the case with players who have such firepower, their defensive prowess can be a bit underrated. Do you like going high here, Jeremy? You mean with the jump cue? I do. I think so, just because the kick looks very tough. Uh, you know, he could swerve the ball a little around the four, I guess. Got action that way. Or ex please. Excuse me, around the purple five. It's funny, I, I didn't make a mistake with the playing it but I'll do it in the commentary sometime. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get used to it for those of a certain age. The uh, the purple five can be be a bit tricky as it was the four ball for 50 some odd years and lovely little shot here gets a bit of love from the seven. This is a bit steep though Jeremy but I think OK. Yeah he's a lefty so he can reach it nicely. Probably just takes a chance going right between the uh, nine and eight up and down the table for shape on the three. But it seems to me, you know, Jason, who played English eight ball and I'm sure toyed around with snooker at a young age, those nifty little kick shots and safety shots seem to be uh, something they excel out besides just, you know, knocking balls in from everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. He really does have all the shots. Nice call. He did travel between that eight and nine, like you said. And I believe this passes the pink four into the side, although it's a very small side pocket from this angle. Such a great shot maker, though. He's eyeing it now. Yeah, the middle pockets knocking them in at this angle. It's like threading the eye of a needle. Beauty there. Yeah, and a bit of a two-way shot. You could see him holding the cue ball behind the brown. But something kind of like a diamond was known for a feel in the States was the side pockets being brutally tough. Classy there, the high side of the side pocket. Psychologically, I think one thing really helping Jason Shaw is that in his third match, while Trump was coming through relatively unscathed, 11 5 against Abdullah Al Shamari, Shaw came very close to defeat. He beat H.C. Chen 11 10 earlier today. And after surviving that, perhaps he feels bulletproof. Well, I totally agree. 
talked to Jason last night a bit and explained my situation, which he kind of, uh, you know, could could kind of feel the same heat, uh, kind of abnormal nerves when you haven't played as much uh, with the pandemic. He said he had that in Vegas a bit, got through some things, and I think every different type of match he plays in this event is going to bode well for him. This tournament is just full of intrigue. It's full of storylines. 256 players started out. At the end of this evening, we're going to have 48 of them left. It really is whittling down now. That eats the arena here. 33 tables in operation. It's a terrific venue. And we've had so many different intriguing matches and now quality collides time after time after time not just by the way on the winner's side but also on the loser's side as well right five jason short to break leading four rights to nil yeah we're getting to that part of the tournament where uh the loser side matches will be dynamite as well and the cream of the crop is uh remaining Come up dry a couple times, figured it out there. Eight ball flies in. One ball careening around and setting up nicely, Jeremy. Yeah, great spot. I, I really like what Phil brought up about the venue. I think the venue can really add to the nerves as much as anything. I think it's uh, much different than a lot of what you're used to, especially not playing some big tournaments in a while. It's almost like it's so nice. There's so much space that you almost notice more going on as a player. Right. That makes a lot of sense. It's a beautiful room here, and the production is top notch. Lights abound. Such a class kind of hall. And you can hear a pin drop. Forgive the obvious. Got this little bit of music going on in the background, but mostly just the sound of pool balls rolling around. Yeah, for the opening break uh, in the morning. I, I don't. I guess it was day one, but. Kind of reminded me of the color of money a little bit when they're at the tournament there and all the balls break at the same time, pretty much. So, no, it's very color of money asking in here. A little tricky here, Jeremy. Yeah, this is a uh, off angle, some distance, kind of something he excels at, though. Mm. Not out of the woods yet, though. Over the seven, and not quite thin enough to make going back and forth easy but not thick enough to be able to hold it so easily either, Nick. What do you think? Yeah, it's a nice point. I was about to ask you the same thing. Let's defer to Mr. Shaw. Well, he made back and forth look easy. And once again, a bit thin, so he's having to work for this one. His ball pocketing has been so on point thus far. In goes the green six, and that's the color of the prize money. U.S. dollars. At stake, 50,000 big ones for the winner. Indeed, Phil. Oh, beautiful little inside English. Boys, he's looking pretty good here tonight on the boardwalk. About to extend it to 5-0. Jason Shaw. Jason Shaw wins the right. Yeah, those back in the UK who decided that Judd Trump was a good bet to win this thing might be looking at their betting slip now and... They might be tempted to rip it up. Don't rip it up yet, guys. Uh, we all know, you know, we've all come from behind before. I mean, hang on to that ticket. Yeah, that was a big talk, you know, with the guys. Of course, we always sport around. Not the guys, of course, wagering on the match, but we always talk about the odds. And there was some shock in the room. You could say that for sure. That uh, with Judd being the the favorite. Well. These days, we all know about odds makers. They are so astute. When do they have the incorrect favorites ever in anything? It really is unusual. Yeah, especially huh, not only that, they, they don't label the right number on top of it, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> so usually anyways. I think he's had a tremendous debut and the way he's conducted himself here has been, well, right, six. I've been a Jason Shaw to Very impressed and proud of him. And of course, if he loses tonight, it's not the end of the road. He goes to the one lost side, and 
who knows what can happen there. Yeah, he's all class. And lest we forget, this match isn't over, although an incredibly tall order for Trump. A little glimmer of hope here with the 3-5 tied up. Jeremy, initial thoughts here? Yeah, there's no two ball in the one. The one really doesn't offer much besides this cross side bank. He may draw into the pink here and just take on the bank. Bank. He can lay him up behind the brown if he wants. He won't see uh, Jason getting out of hand. And I think Jason, as much as any, probably knows, you know, what snooker players are, are very capable of and what their weaknesses are, and so on and so forth. But as far as Trump's concerned. I thought he had a tough match in the last. You know, that, that opponent he had in his last match can play. Yeah, he can play, but in that contest, Jeremy, he didn't. He was very poor and he made a, an absolute glut of mistakes. Yeah, well, I feel, I feel for him because uh, I was in the same boat, same time. A oh, nice call there, Jeremy. He did lay him up on the seven. No real simple path. So, uh, the pink has really got him cut off. I would go to the top rail, which is on the left side of your screen. Uh, you could call it the bottom rail and back at the three that way. Extension, please. Yeah, extension called. He, he's trying to figure it out. Looks like he's trying to go two rails. A lot of spin. Last yeah. drop. It's ball in hand. Yeah, and that was a lot to ask. And as great as these guys are, that, you know, he was trying to bend that cue ball a little bit, right? Probably not something they do very often playing snooker shot like that. But usually the snooker players, I think, kick very well. Played Steve Davis many times in the uh, Moscone Cup. And when he rolled out, you may not, like, have seen that situation where he rolled out, but you knew that he, he knew something, you know, and so you normally took the shot. Well, Davis on one occasion potted the winning nine ball, didn't he, in the Moscone Cup, and he also reached the semi-final of the World Nine Ball Championship. What, what a cue sports mind, that man. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, pocketing the ball, but he obviously got through the rat grade, but just really a genius, in my opinion, when it came to uh, understanding what was going on and what was going to happen. Pretty funny guy, too. Sure, you have some stories, buddy. It's like he's okay. A little bit close for comfort from our vantage point, but I think he's just fine. Yeah, I wouldn't do much here. I think he just holds the ball, takes the nine in the upper corner. Shaw oh, yeah. agrees. Yeah, pulled it back a little bit. Yeah, he, the angle fooled us. He's looking awfully Jason confident, so. Well, he is, you know, Jason Shaw in his second match here against Daniel Dagotot. He came through 9-0. Just wondering whether we might see another whitewash against Judd Trump. Five more racks needed for that to happen.
We are currently watching the only match in play in the third winners' round at the moment, but there's plenty of action going on on the one loss side of the draw. Earl Strickland 4 1 up on Moritz Neuhausen from Germany. You can see Billy Thorpe has made an absolutely phenomenal start. He's 8 0 up. Stung by his defeat to send him to the one loss side of the draw. Now trying to bounce back. There's another big player on the one loss side, Warren Kiamko and Skylar Woodward being held to 3 3 by fellow American Sean Wilkie. Well, this is getting a little bit out of hand, Jeremy. Yeah, with him, uh, you could see at the last couple of breaks getting the speed on the one going to that corner. And you see that by quite a few guys. That'll change, I think, come the final 16 when they uh, start using the triangle. But at this moment, yeah, you could you could see matches if one guy gets comfortable. And Shaw looks pretty darn comfortable and the score says so. Uh, you could see some lopsided scores here. Yeah, he sure does. In a trance of sorts, just unconscious out there. In between sessions, you know, I was just researching how he did when he won the, the US Open in 2017. He was unbeaten, won eight matches out of eight down there in Virginia. And boy, what a succession of world-class opponents he overcame, the likes of Kopin Yi, Yukio Akagariyama, Billy Thorpe, Ko Ping Chung, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, and of course, in the final, Albania's Eklund Kachi, 13-4. He was on fire that week, four years ago, and few would dare to bet against a form of repeat. Jeremy, is this a hair awkward? I mean, of course yeah, it's manageable, but... I think he just, like, kills it with a little spin like this. He's, the only thing you're worried about is it getting there, and he did real well. And I'll tell you, Phil, I was there that week, and one thing Jason did, and it's usually what the winner does in that, that tournament, this tournament, the U.S. Open, is he just ran five or six racks in every match at some point. You know, he just separated himself... Uh, and he made one huge comeback, if I remember correctly, down 10 to 6 against Ko or, or one of the, one of the uh, Taiwanese players, Chinese Taipei. Fell a little on the rail here, though. Yeah. 7 0. Okay, so 7 0 to Eagle Eye. The Eagle at the moment is swooping down to get his prey, the prey being Judd Trump. Now, in the arena, it is Carl Boyce. Over to you, Carl. One, two, one, two. Cheers, guys. Yeah, just over my shoulder, the legend, five-time US Open champion. He's playing the young German. There's a 40-year age gap in this match, but it's all going Earl Strickland's way at the minute. And playing next to them, two-time champion, Mika Immenum. He's in a tight match as well. And then next to them, Curry Jewell, who's also won the US Open. He's playing in a tight match. There's US Open champions over my shoulder just everywhere. Jeremy, you know Rock what eight. it feels like to go to the distance in this tournament Ladies and lift the trophy. Right it must be a source of immense pride. Yeah, it really is. Um, you kind of, at least me, anytime I've ever done well in a tournament, kind of forget where I'm at a little bit. <laughs> when you're doing it, uh, you kind of just fall into a zone. But then, uh, yeah, afterwards, it's a big big relief and, and uh, a lot of good feelings. At, at the same time, I, I got there one time and didn't win, uh, you know, and and that's a totally different feeling. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Phil. And uh, so, but you know, you want to get there, you want to have a chance to win the tournament, whether whether it falls short or not. And I'll tell you, Jason, he's doing everything it takes. Oh, it looks right. like to uh, to not give any any air here to Trump. Well, for a moment, he was going to freeze him on the three. Yeah, winning the U.S. Open, it's such a phenomenal accomplishment. So many great players over the years never quite capture a major of sorts. And 
can just feel how badly everybody wants it here this week. What do you like here, Jeremy? Try to come back by where he is, maybe? Yeah, I think he's going to. This is a shot that he should excel at. Uh, of course, it's a little different. Extension, the please. snooker balls and the pool balls, but, I mean, you know, you think they should be relative, right, because they're all the same, same size, so. Naturally, he spent a lot of time in the chair over the last 15, 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah, just a containing safety there. Not bad. I think that was very intended, to be honest with you. It's not going to get him anywhere against against Jason, though. Jason's going to place the one underneath the two again and run the cue ball two rails behind the three, I think, anyways. Yeah, nice call. Didn't quite get behind the three, but he's left a lot of distance. Maybe a slightly better look, though, for Judd than last time. Yeah, this is where you may see a little difference. Some some of the great players may knock this long rail bank in where I'm not so sure Trump would really shoot at it. He did oh, take I like it on. that. Yeah, I like that. His instincts, right? Pool instincts. Notice him holding the cue ball on the top rail. The cue ball is precariously close, as Jeremy just mentioned. So Jason has an awful lot of work cut out for him. Well, I don't think he can do anything else but just uh, roll the ball in and take the cut on the two. He could overcut the one and bank it between the purple and the black back down table and run the cue ball one rail underneath the three. That lays nice. Uh, he he was feeling good, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little too good. So talented. And did well, he just hook him behind the purple, Jeremy? It's well, hard I don't to tell from here. Even if he can see it, really tough business here with the one. Can't get on the two, three on the opposite end of the table. So, but one thing for Trump, though, we are playing winter break. You can fall behind, but you know if you're trailing, it's exactly the format you want to be playing. Yeah, good point. Comebacks are never out of the question when it's winter breaks. We'll look at Jason Shaw in his first match. He was three-three with Esteban Robles. And then Raya six back to win 9-3. Robles never got back to the table. Crafty. I think he maybe uh, have a pot. Now he's going to lay him behind the three. Nice shot. I'm not sure he got there, though. It's close. I think he's okay. Yeah, the round of applause would sort of signify that he is hooked. At the very least, Jason will have a little jump of sorts if he wants. Oh, I think he's got a shot. I don't know he's if he has a shot at the pocket or not, or if he's laying him up on the seven. Well, there's That'll your tell answer. You. Yeah. What do you like here, Jeremy? Bad spot here. Not sure he can get the cue ball to the top rail there, the, the you know the short rail on the right side of your screen and make it run or not. He may have to elevate. Oh, he's going to try and do it. So watch out for this point here. Slow the cue ball down. Uh, he's trying to play a deft touch behind the brown. And he's got to come away with the, some of these types of games, right? Just. Get, not only get in to stay in these matches, but you know to get back in this match. Uh, it's going to be a little light. And there's just an example of the sort of inexperience with the pool cloth and so on. Phil and Snooker, one would expect him to kind of be behind that ball. Nine out of ten, right? Absolutely, yeah. Another indication as well of just how tight these middle pockets are. The blue two is almost defying gravity hanging over the jaws. Oohs and ahs from the crowd. They couldn't quite believe it stayed up. But now, 8 0 is very much beckoning. Another runaway to tell you about on the one loss side of the draw. Billy Thorpe has reached the hill against Sullivan Clark. Thorpe, stung by his defeat a little earlier, leads 10 1. Jason Shaw wins the 
right. One way traffic here. Jason Shaw loving it. 8 0 up on Judd Trump. And there is the possibility it's only human nature that Trump might start to get a little demoralized, Jeremy. Yeah, it was just, uh, you read my mind, Phil. I was wondering if, you know, he's such a champion. I don't think it's, you're going to see a total give up, but maybe doesn't put in the effort each and every shot. You know, there's going to be safeties, kicks, and whatnot. So, you know, he may be looking on to the one loss side already. He's got the mentality. He loves handing out very heavy defeats to opponents in snooker. And now he's having an unpalatable taste of his own medicine. Now look at it. Earl the Pearl Strickland. Watch him go. Pearl's catching a little gear over there, Double J. Yeah, someone told me he was playing with a 16 millimeter shaft. I'm, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Very thick for. Right, well, nine. What millimeter do you go with? Something around 11? Uh, 12, 12.4, I think it is, something like that. But Earl always comes with an equipment change that uh, may, sometimes transcends into many players doing it. Well, right. Uh, we were talking about Shaw's extremely long queue. Earl kind of pioneered that, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much for these guys with the addition, you know, the extensions and whatnot. No one's really uh, followed with the double glove and the glasses like Earl had <laughs> right. uh, not long ago. But... Well, he's 6-1 up anyway on his young German opponent. Do you think he tries to spin between the 9-5 here, Jeremy? Or? Uh, I may. I don't know. This is funny. He can come above the 9 to get on the pink in the same pocket as the 3, but maybe a little thin on the pink. You know, he could use the 9 after that to maybe slow the cue ball down. I'm not sure. But I like your shot if he's comfortable with it, with the speed control. Oh, he went twice. That's not. That needs to settle. Yeah, good thing for him is he can bump the purple if he needs. If he feels like he can't kill the cue ball here, he may be able to manage bumping the purple. I'm not sure. No, it looks like to me he's all right. But you know, Nick, you get a little out of line on one, you start to get a little more out of line on the next. And <laughs> I know all about that, my friend. Tough little shot here. Yeah, this one, this guy gets going. It's uh, truly a sight to behold. He's one of the very best rhythm players in the game, in addition to just being one of the very best anyway, but just a scary kind of guy when he's feeling it. Killed the cue ball a little bit, like you alluded to earlier, Jeremy, and uh, it's looking like 9-0 for Mr. Shaw is imminent. Yeah, and it's just always an event. You know, you see it in every sport. You see it in golf a lot. You see it in tennis a lot, individual sports. But Shaw's always there to win. But something about that U.S. Open that uh, just kicks him into gear. Eagle Eye has his claws in one of Snooker's all-time greats, Jason Shaw. Leads Judd Trump, listen to this, 9 nil.
the winner here this week in Atlantic City will construct his own particular boardwalk empire. And right now, well, it's a stroll for Jason Shaw. He is absolutely dominating. 9-0 up on Judd Trump. We'd like to see some of Trump's potting magic, you, right ten. but maybe time is running low. To break. Leading nine rights to nil. Maybe time is running out. Well, we'll go ahead, Nick. No, I, I was just going to say certainly not far-fetched that Trump doesn't return to the table, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say that, you know, anytime you're an underdog and nothing personal to Trump, but, you know, 99 out of 100 are going to be an underdog against Jason. But, you know, you know the match needs to start out close. You know, just, you know, they got to hang in there, right, for pressure to build and maybe to, for Judd to get a little more comfortable and the score line be something like 5-2 to two or, you know, 6-3 to three or something like that before he makes a little run. But. This looks pretty uh, insurmountable. Fancy a kick safe of sorts here or a rollout? Well, the six is uh, the four and the, uh, the five and the six, excuse me, are allowing him to, to kick and hit a piece of the one and take a good chance of getting the safety here. Just letting the cue ball kind of run maybe a few feet up the table, not very far at all. Can't roll out. I don't think there's a rollout that's any, any good besides another kick shot. That's the shot I'm looking at where he may be able to bump the one into the four. Extension, let, please. Let the one or the four trickle to the rail and have the six there to help you. Just let the cue ball come out in the center of the table, something like that. He's used the extension. Looks like he's pretty surveying. sharp guy with these shots, by the yeah. way. He'll just pass the six barely with the cue ball. Watch. Oh, beautiful yeah. call, Jeremy. Maybe uh, came up a little heavy. High. He was wanting the one to, you know, hit the four, uh, excuse me, hit the purple five a little bit. That was the plan. But very nifty with all those shots. Now, the problem Trump has is he really needs to open the five, six. If he can pocket the one, but then he can't get back on the three. He's looking at it rail first, possibly off the five. If he applies a lot of backspin, maybe he can go rail first, one off the five, and zip it back for the red three in the bottom left of our screen. I think it's land perfect. And again, here's the, some of those, uh, you know, cueing instincts. Something shot you're never shooting in snooker. Oh, he didn't draw it. Well. And I'll tell you, even more so, a lot of players aren't liking this, what's going on here. That Shaw's facing a, a, a pretty pressured situation here with this match, you know, a little unfamiliar with with Judd Trump and not only having a lot of success, but gets a little rhythm going too for future matches. Yeah, absolutely. A very rare miss there on the one, and, and this is absolutely vital for Trump to get going, of course. Yeah, come on, Judd. Knock a few in. Hit that pretty well, by the way. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, when's the last time he got to pocket a ball? I'm trying to remember. It was 3 0 whenever I arrived, and. I don't think I've seen him pocket a ball the last six games. A few safeties, a few kicks, but I don't think he shot at the pocket at all. No, he, he, he's been really in the blender, as they say. That one got away from him slightly, although this is delicate. Do you think he has enough room to, to mm. try to slice it in, Jeremy? I think uh, he just, Jason's great at this, too, just shaving or coming across the one and just using solely the pink, letting the cue ball float down by the three. To get the safety, it looks like to me he might be attacking though. Yeah, he went at it. Yeah, Bit of a two-way. Oh yeah. And I know Trump's not looking at it this way, but he can do a lot for himself as well. Uh, you know, looking at future matches right here, trying to knock some balls in. The more he plays, uh, he's only going to improve. We all know that. Maybe the concentration lost a little bit. Yeah, Bill? he kind of called it. Yeah, I think he's had the, the stuffing knocked out of him, to be perfectly honest. He is 
a champion who controls match after match and who bullies opponents. He's not used to this. Of course, he doesn't win every match, but how often does he get absolutely blown away? Basically, in snooker, never. Beauty there, though. End of the days, he's in this moment now, so maybe you can find a little something. And great point you made, Jeremy. There's always stuff to take away from every match, even if it's not in the cards, so to speak, to, to pull out the win, although, of course, still possible. He'll be on the one loss side if, if he doesn't get it done here, and there's more pool to be played. And, and every one of these matches, he gains vital experience, being that he's so raw at the game. Yeah, when, you know, could you look at Judd Trump and consider, or himself consider himself a newbie? <laughs> you know, like, oh, I need to consume everything I have. Or I can, anyways. Oh, like right here, for instance. Play that with deep screw and reverse side, as he would on a snooker table, but the reaction was very, very different. So uh, an awkward nine ball that could, could be missed. Yeah, very, and frankly, the heat is on to not lose 11-0. We, we know there will be ramblings or abound about that. But he does make it. Well done, he's on the board. They let him hear it here in AC. Ironic applause, well done, Jern, well done, mate. Well done. The pool crowd being very hospitable to their <laughs> new member. Tell you what, you know, regardless of whether he wins this match or not, and it seems highly likely he won't. And by the way, if he does go to the one loss side, he's going to have a, a very tough task next time out as well. But one thing he has done, and this might seem like platitudes, but it's true, he's made many friends. He's won a lot of hearts, and I think he's done wonders for Poole and for Snooker, merely by his presence here. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Phil. Uh, he's he's really all class, and, and he's a superstar, you know. W w when he walks into the room, everybody feels the presence, and for him to come out to this event was just a really invigorating thing for the pool scene, and snooker alike, like you said. And uh, Rocky Levin. He's shown a lot of nice form on the break. He might be able to claw his way back in this thing, Jeremy. I mean, stranger things have happened. Absolutely. Uh, he's made some big comebacks in the snooker. And, you know, if he gets some open shots and gets going. And I've always thought, you know, for the most part, you know, a few snooker players, I won't, I won't, I won't lie about it, Phil. We're kind of wondering about this pool game, you know, this 20 years ago or so. But. Most of the guys recognize how difficult all the Q sports are and, and uh, can really appreciate the game once they start to play it. I remember that little phase back in the day when the boys thought they could just come across the pond and rip off these pool tournaments left and right. It's not so easy, gentlemen. I mean, yeah, just to offer a, a counter argument, I think the guys are so good on the snooker tour. If they devoted a year or two full time to pool, they would be very, very, very dangerous. Maybe another very should be included. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure that that's fairly unequivocal, but nonetheless. This is tricky. Can he come one, two, three around for the for the purple five in the side of which he's playing the four, oh, Jeremy? Oh, maybe going in between the six, nine and then back between the six, nine. Yeah. Top, like a top right English. Yeah. Here. Yeah, I think it's close. I think he might be even be able to go at race. the four, eight with the cue ball doing that. Maybe. But uh, I think the one thing the snooker players realize, just like the English eight ball players, and there's you know Jason Shaw, you got your Darren Appletons, you know that were great players, and other Q sports that came over. But they recognize that hey, this game has a lot of merit. It's not you know just some walk in the park. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will endorse that completely. I love my time at pool tournaments, and you guys are absolutely. At the top of the tree in terms of skill and knowledge. That's the that's the thing, knowledge, knowing what to do. And tall is a game where you have to think not just literally but laterally. Right. Have to cross that bank here, Jeremy. Yeah, he's definitely going here. It's just a matter of if he can't quite just stop his cue ball, he's got to cut the purple a little bit. 
So he may have to shoot the six from a little further away than he wanted, but it shouldn't be a problem. Center of the hole there. This is tricky here, though. As you said, he, he did have to accept some distance. Yeah, and he, again, not thin enough to move the cue ball easily, not heavy enough to hold it easily anyways. Thus the deliberation. Yeah. You, may, you please. may see him play for another bank on the seven here. I mean, this is a treacherous shot trying to go three rails with the cue ball here. It's a really nice find, Jeremy, whether he does or not. To just float out and play for the bank does seem quite logical. He does punch it across. I mean, when you hit him like that, why not? What wow. a beaut. Wow. Yeah, they love to hear it. Yeah, Trump will appreciate that stroke there. That's another one of the shots that arguably some of the players think that that uh, that weight really helps that extension on the cue that adds some some size and some power. Interesting. I think the, the smart ones know it's that's about ninety nine percent Jason Shaw that makes that happen. <laughs> right. You've heard of Jason and the Argonauts. Well, this is Jason overpowering the Juddernaut. Jason Shaw on the hill already. Can Judd Trump restore any respectability to the scoreline? Well, right now, you would have to say the answer most probably is no. And by the way, this isn't the only one-sided match out there on the adjoining table, table two, what about Earl Strickland? 9 1 up on Moritz Neuheisen. One is 60, one is 20. Strickland old enough to be his grandfather. And he's giving him a, a lesson at the moment. Well, I think no coincidence, you know, we're not hearing much from Earl over there, right? He's getting he's getting the job done. <laughs> business. All business for Earl. That's exactly right, Jeremy. How many times have you crossed paths with him over the years? Oh my. <laughs> Well, he was a good, still a good friend of mine, and, and uh, you know, spent a lot of time right, with Earl at different times, and of course, Moscone Cups. Every Moscone Cup I played on, he was on. Played many doubles with him. Um, unique experiences all the time, you know. I bet. But you know, one of my heroes as well. Six flies in, one careening around. It's mm -hmm. the pink. You got to appreciate that level that. I, Especially with all the other great players, when Earl got to the finals, he rarely ever lost. Which is, you know, speaks for itself. Yeah. Probably why he has more titles than anyone. This combination looks a hair steep, or yeah, I mean, really has to turn it loose and hard to be accurate there. Just quickly on Strickland, to validate your point, Jeremy. He's won five U.S. Opens. He's been to five U.S. Open finals. Yeah, and I think it's maybe the same with the world titles, Phil. Is it five world nine balls, I believe? Same thing. It's three. Is it three world nine balls? Maybe two so. world eight balls is what I'm thinking of because that's another game that people don't realize how well he plays. He has plenty of eight ball championships. Underrated uh, pocket of peace player Extension as well. Place. Yeah. Well, just like Judd Trump, the instincts, right? So. Used his extension here. He's he's weighing his options. He's cutting it in the other corner with the two hanging. He figures if he makes this, he's oh. home free. Oh my! Yeah, and if these guys are close to the ball, right? They're taking all on everything extreme. They just stay aggressive, and that's really the most beautiful part of the game. And that was just a lovely shot there. Sounded like he partially miscued there, Nick. Wasn't it a funny sound a little bit? It was a little funny. He didn't look at his tip or anything, and no. the cue ball drew awfully nice <laughs> from like eight yeah. feet away. So body language wise, it, it seemed business as usual, but it was a kind of tinky sort of sound. Well, when he gets that little touch going where it doesn't take many pre-strokes, you know, they just like a bump, bump, go. He's really something. He's eyeing the the seven eight situation it, it might not pass and the four is precarious as well. He'll try to just slide it down past the seven and the eight. Yeah. 
I th I'm not sure the seven's playable. He came a little hot with the cue ball. I thought he would want a little more angle to get behind that seven, but doesn't seem like he's going to make not only a bad decision, but a poorly hit ball either. So he's looking at it now. I try to pull the cue ball back in some capacity for either a bank or the seven in the top right, maybe. He's going to hit the eight here. He's going to open the seven. He's going to have a chance. And we'll have a chance once again to, in all likelihood, watch that stellar execution. He's going to try to punch this thing across the table and out. Yeah, oh, he comes he around. Yeah, I was going to say he may go forward because that's another shot he, and he just really excels at. Oh, pardon me. It's been a real pleasure, gentlemen, watching Shaw get to work. Let's see if he can handle this. And as much as some other players don't like it, he may have gotten a few other players in stroke watching this match as well. <laughs> After that, Frankie goes to Hollywood comes to mind. When two tribes go to war, only 